In the previous lecture, we had discussion on instantaneous power in AC circuits and uh, now we are going to have discussion on the average power in AC circuits. But uh, before we move on to the discussion on average power, I want to quickly revise the expression we obtained for instantaneous power PT. We found it is equal to half VMIM cos theta V minus theta I, which is the time independent term plus half VMIM cos twice of omega t plus theta V plus theta I and this term here is the time dependent term and therefore we can say that the instantaneous power will depend on time and hence it will be difficult to measure the instantaneous power because it will change with time. On the other hand if we talk about average power then average power is time independent you will see this when we will obtain the expression of average power. And uh, now we will move on to the definition of average power and then we will find out the expression of average power. Average power is the average of instantaneous power over one period. And uh, I will represent the average power by uppercase P sub AV. And we know it is equal to the average of instantaneous power over one period. Let's say the period is uppercase T and we know instantaneous power PT is changing with time and therefore to find the average we will integrate PT with respect to time T from 0 to T that is over one period and then we will divide it by the total time and the total time will be t minus 0. So I can write 1 over t multiplied to this integration and uh, we know here we have the independent variable or the argument equal to t and if we want the argument omega t in place of t then we have to make few changes in this. When t is equal to 0, when t is equal to 0 omega t will be 0 as well and when t is equal to the period t then omega t will be 2 pi over t multiplied to t this t and this t will cancel out so we have omega t equal to 2 pi so we can write the average power equal to 1 over 2 pi integration 0 to 2 pi power pt d omega t. So I hope this point is clear to you and now we will put pt equal to half vmim cos theta v minus theta i plus half vmim cos twice of omega t plus theta v plus theta i. So we will have the average power equal to 1 over t integration 0 to t inside the bracket we will have half vm im cos theta v minus theta i plus half vm im cos twice of omega t plus theta v plus theta i and we are integrating with respect to time t. In the next step we will try to integrate this term and this term separately. So we will have the average power equal to 1 by t multiplied to 1 by 2 vmim cos theta v minus theta i is constant with respect to time. So we will write vm im cos theta v minus theta i outside the integration and we will have integration dt from 0 to t plus half vmim is constant so we will write it outside the integration so we will have 1 over t 1 over t multiplied to half vmim and then integration from 0 to t cos twice of omega t plus theta v plus theta i dt. When you focus on this integration you will find here we will have t 
as the result of integration and this t and this t will cancel out. So we are having half vmim cos theta v minus theta i plus 0. From here we will have 0 y0 because here we are integrating sinusoidal function over one period and when you integrate a sinusoidal function over one period you are bound to get 0 and 0 multiplied to this will give you 0. So finally we are having the average power equal to half vm im cos theta v minus theta i or you can write half vm im cos theta i minus theta v because cos minus theta is equal to cos theta and uh, from the obtained result we can have average power in the terms of RMS values we can write half vm im as vm over root 2 multiplied to im over root 2 and this part will remain as it is and we know vm over root 2 will be vrms and im over root 2 will be irms so this will be equal to vrms multiplied to irms cos theta v minus theta i so try to remember these final results they are important now moving on to the next part we will try to understand two cases in case number one theta v is equal to theta i this means both current and voltage are in the same phase and when this happens the average power will be half vm i m cos 0 degree and cos 0 degree is equal to 1 therefore we will have the average power equal to half vm i m or we can write half i m square multiplied to r because this is the case in which we are having the element known as resistor we have seen in case of resistor both current and voltage are in the same phase now we will move on to case number two and in this case theta v minus theta i is equal to plus minus 90 degrees and we know cos 90 degrees and cos minus 90 degrees is equal to zero and therefore the average power will be zero and uh, we know theta v minus theta i will be plus minus 90 degrees when we have the purely reactive circuit so from this discussion we can say that resistor will absorb the power all the time on the other hand inductor and capacitor will absorb zero average power so i hope these two cases are clear to you and uh, let us move on to our final point of discussion in which we will find out the average power when current and voltage are expressed in the frequency domain this means we are having the phasor of the voltage let's say it is vm angle theta v and we are having the phasor of the current let's say it is im angle theta i and from this we can have the average power and you should know that finding out the instantaneous power using the phasors of voltage and current is not possible so let us move on to the calculation of average power using v phasor and i phasor i can find out the conjugate of current phasor it will be i m angle negative of theta i and when i multiply v phasor and conjugate of i phasor we will have v m i m v m i m angle will be theta v minus theta i or we can write it as v m i m inside the bracket cos theta v minus theta i plus j sine theta v minus theta i now when you focus on the real part you will find it is v m i m multiplied to cos theta v minus theta i so we can say that 
the real part of v phasor multiplied to the conjugate of i phasor is equal to vm im cos theta v minus theta i now when you compare this with this you will find if we multiply half on both the sides we will have our average power and therefore we can say that half of real part of v phasor multiplied to the conjugate of i phasor will give us the average power and in this way you can have the average power from v phasor and i phasor so this is all for this lecture in the coming presentations we will solve few questions on average power in ac circuits